Hello and welcome to my demonstration of the True Hinge Axis Transfer and Mounting Procedures. We've already recorded the patient and marked the skin of her True Hinge Axis and so we're going to do a True Hinge Axis Transfer at this time. To do that, we start off by doing a traditional ear bow. Again, we put the nasion relator in the upward position and tighten it in place. We do have the stem assembly which has a little shorter end versus a little longer end. The shorter end does have a little A on top which correlates with the A here onto the face bow. So all you gotta do is connect A with A and it'll put that stem assembly in the right position. We wanna make sure that our clamps are loose. So they're all ready, push the nasion back and so we're ready with our face bow. So we'll go ahead and do the bite fork registration here first. The bite fork, we do have our bite tabs, which is a red impression compound on a self-adhesive strip. So we can just bend this back and peel off a little one of these bite tabs. We place that onto the posterior molar area on both sides of the bite fork. And another one, we'll put it on the other molar side. There is a little dental midline mark on the bite fork, so we don't want to cover that up. So I'm going to put the third one sideways in the incisor area so I don't cover up that dental midline mark. So place one sideways there. So now we can temper this in hot tap water to soften the compound to get a registration of the maxillary teeth. So I'm going to go ahead and temper that in hot water at this time. Okay, we tempered the compound in hot water. I like to test to make sure it's soft and you can actually squeeze it into a cone shape if you want to a little bit at this point too. I also wanna make sure that the stainless steel is not too hot for the patient, so I test it on my hand. So now we can come to the patient, rotate in, we get the dental midline mark, line to dental midline, and we can push up slowly, getting indentations of the teeth into the compound. I'll go ahead and chill this compound at this point to harden it. I've now hardened the compound. We'll try it back in the mouth to make sure it fits accurately and that it doesn't rock around. And it looks really, really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. We can use a little air syringe on the back side and dry this off. And we do have a bite fork stabilizer. It's just a soft, foamy material as a peel off paper backing. So we can peel that off and then stick it right onto the bottom of the bite fork. This will give something for the patient to bite up into to help support this bite fork against their upper teeth. So we'll go ahead and place this back in. Seat it correctly, bite up. It does not move when she bites up and of course when you move the stem, the head moves. There's no flexion in the bite fork. If there is a little flexion, you may want to reline it with a little bit of a ZOE paste or some kind of a material to make it more accurate, but this looks pretty good. So now we'll go ahead and do our traditional ear bow. Again, I'd like you to reach up and put these in your ears, sort of like a stethoscope or some earbuds. And I want you to put, oh, loosen this large screw, push that in your ear all the way as far as you can without hurting yourself. Then I'm going to raise this up a little bit, tighten the large screw. Loosen this screw, let nasion go back towards the nasion. And I do like to hold it here so I can push on the nasion, which will pull the face bow slightly in their ears. This will help support the face bow so it doesn't slump down her nose and keep it in a good fixed position. Now at this point, we can go ahead and add our clamps to the, to the bite fork stem. I like to push the clamp all the way towards the patient, grab that clamp, and we're gonna tighten this screw as tight as we can. I'm going to reach up here and offset any torque and tighten this one as tight as we can. Now what we've done here is we actually picked up an arbitrary relationship to the axis using the ear bow, but we've adjusted the top of the pin here, this vertical pulse, which is equal to the upper surface of this face bow. The upper surface of this face bow is your third plane of reference. So it's actually located 22 millimeters below nasion where this upper surface is. So actually what we've done in the ear bow procedure is align the vertical post to our third point of reference orbitale. So we can go ahead and remove the face bow at this point. So I'm going to loosen the nasion and tighten the screw. I like to have the patient reach up again. I loosen the large screw, open your mouth and take it out of your ears. 
I like to have them open their mouth first because if they pull it out of their ears, they might pull on the face bow and change the relationship slightly. So it's better sometimes to have them open their mouth so when they pull the bow out of their ears and there's some flexion to it, it won't distort the bite fork registration. At this point, we can loosen the small screw here, release the bite fork assembly. This can go back uh, for be cleaned up for another patient's use. And we're going to use this portion to do our true hinge axis transfer. So for the true hinge axis transfer, we do have what's called the crossbar and clamp. The crossbar and clamp is going to go over the top of the bite fork stem assembly. The flat is going to go towards the screw. So we can tighten that up. And that now simulates the crossbar from the recorder. So we can now add our recording arms back on here to go back to the true hinge axis marks we marked on the skin. So we'll go ahead and place this back in the patient's mouth. And go ahead and bite up. You can go ahead and sit erect like that is good. Now we can go ahead and add our recording arms. With the recording arms, the manual talks about extending the tip of the point here. There's a little bevel tip here, just so that it's extending from the housing. And that's way, that way we can retract that when we remove this face bow and not scratch the patient's skin. What you can do is you can add a little more length if you want and then use the Bennett ring here as a guide. So when we loosen this up to pull it away, to remove it from the patient, not to scratch the skin, we can re-index it back to where it was, where it was locating the axis or to the axis points that we had on the skin. So the main thing is to have a Bennett ring there. So when you loosen this up and pull it away, when we remove it, that we can re-index it back to the same spot. So I'm going to use it right about there. I'm going to put this back onto the crossbar. Then I'm going to come back till I'm close to the hinge axis point. And then I'm going to tighten the large screw with the spring so that it's all the way down. And I'm going to tighten the other large, uh, other small screw on the top. I'm going to use only the there we can adjust that a little bit. Then I can use the micro adjustments to adjust this up and down, forward and back to the hinge axis points we marked on her skin. So I've adjusted there. We'll go ahead and do it on the other side. Again, I'm going to leave this extended out a little wise, tighten the screw, push the bent ring up, put this onto the cross rod, and then come back to where the hinge axis point is approximately on the skin. And I'm going to tighten the large screw, with the spring all the way, and the other screw on the top. And now I can adjust this up or down, or I can even adjust it into the skin a little bit more. Push the bent ring up against the sidearm so we have that reference. So I can adjust that forward and back or up and down. So you can see me adjusting up and down and going right to the spot we located on the skin. So now we have a true hinge axis point along with our third point of reference orbitality creating a true axis orbital plane of reference. So at this point what I like to do is tighten the second screw here on the bottom just lightly because in this clamp it does have a little spring in it. That you can push down it has a little springiness so if we loosely tighten the small screw on the bottom then that will prevent that arm from springing on us so I'm just verifying that I got the spot on this side right there I'm going to counteract the clamp with the small screw and that completes our true hinge axis procedures so what we want to do is go ahead and loosen the screw, pull the stoss away, don't bump the Bennett ring. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Now we'll go ahead and have the patient open their mouth and we come slowly downward and forward. And now we have our true hinge axis orbital transfer face bow. So we'll take this to the laboratory for our true hinge axis mounting procedures. Okay, we're now in the laboratory completing our true hinge axis transfer and mounting procedures. We do have our axis orbital face bow from the patient. And first of all, I would like to remove the bite fork stabilizer. So I'm just going to set this down and very gently remove the bite fork stabilizer without bending the bite fork. 
Okay. Now what we want to do is measure the facial width. And we have a little scale here on the front of the stand. And so we'll put one stylus right to the edge and then we'll read out how long the facial width is. And here I got about 142 millimeters. 142 millimeters. Now when the axis extension pins on the axis mounting system are all the way in, it's at 120 millimeters. So if we take 142 and minus 120, we end up with 22 millimeters. And we want to do it equal on both sides, so we divide 22 by 2, which means we want to pull out the extension pins 11 millimeters per side. Plus the indentation or dimples on the end of the pin are about a millimeter deep, so I'm going to go out one extra millimeter. So I'm going to go out 12 millimeters per side. Then we can hinge this back and we can test how well that fits into the little dimples. And it's a little bit too far for me to spring this out, so I'm going to go ahead and back that back off to 11 millimeters per side. So I'm just going to readjust it real quick. Adjust this back to 11. And then I'll test it again. I put one of the styluses into the dimple on one side. Then I can see how far I need to spring it out over the other side. It's about one millimeter, which is perfect. So I'll just spring that out over until it clips into the little dimple. And now we're rotating around a true hinge axis of the upper frame of the articulator. We do want to build a plaster support under the bite fork to support the bite fork and maxillary cast during the mounting procedures. So we do have two different height plaster retaining rings. And we want to see which one's going to fit underneath there. And this one's going to be a little bit tight. So I think I'm going to use the short one here. So I can just hinge this back. We can add the plaster retainer ring there. We do want to use a little bit of silicone lubricant spray so that the plaster does not stick to the remount jig that's built into the axis mounting stand. So I'm just going to spray just a little bit of silicone spray like that. And then I'll go ahead and see how much plaster I need to support that bite fork. And I need a nice big dollop of plaster. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the plaster at this time. So we mixed up a really nice batch of quick set plaster here. And I'll go ahead and just pour that into the remount jig area. Make sure we're indexing the little index holes. And we'll just add a bunch more so we can build up a nice little support underneath that bite fork. And that should go ahead and make a connection. We'll swing this around and recess the bite fork into that soft plaster and we'll push that down until it the pin touches the platform. So it's touching the platform there. You can wipe off any little bit of excess plaster that's right there. Put it underneath the bike fork on that side. And so now we'll have a nice solid support here for the true hinge axis. We'll go ahead and let this plaster set. Then we'll be able to add our maxillary model, a mounting plate, and finish the mounting procedures. Okay, the plaster is now set and we got a good solid support in our bite fork. So we can now add our model to the indentations of the bite fork registration. That fits really well. I am going to wet the model here a little bit so the plaster does stick a little bit better to it. And then I'll re-index that back into its registration right there. Looks good. Now we can add a mounting plate to the upper mounting plate area. We could just swing this around and do a mounting like this, but sometimes it's nice to get the expensive recording arms out of our way since we're going to have some plaster here as well. So we can go ahead and remove the recording arms by just loosening the large screw with the spring. Remove the recording arm. 
And then we can remove the crossbar and clamp. There are little notches here on the side of the remount jig for hooking on elastic rubber bands that we can sling over the model to help hold it in place during the mounting procedures. So I like to kind of crisscross those across the maxillary cast. So that'll now hold the cast a little bit better as I add plaster, not only to the model, but we can also add a mounting plate. We'll add plaster to the mounting plate. We'll swing this around, allowing the pin to drop all the way down and touch the table. This way, the top of the pin, our third point of reference, or batali, will equal the third point of reference of the upper frame, which is the lower surface of the upper frame here, or the reference flag, the undersurface of the reference flag. It'd be the same. So we can see that we need a nice little uh, amount of plaster to make a connection. So I'll go ahead and mix some plaster at this time. Okay, I've now mixed a nice little batch of plaster. And while this is still somewhat thin, I'm gonna go ahead and add to the mounting plate first so I can get well around that retention lug in the center, as well as the little retention tabs that are on the side of the mounting plate. Then I go ahead and just fill the mounting plate up on both sides. I can go ahead and add a little plaster to the model. Just enough to make a connection to the mounting plate. So I'll drop the pin all the way down, and I'll swing this all the way around until that pin touches the plate down here, and then I can wipe off any little bit of excess that may extend beyond the buckle vestibule of the study cast or the mounting plate. Because we'll use that buckle vestibule and the mounting plate as a guide for adding more plaster and beefing this up a little bit and making the models look real pretty. So we'll go ahead and let this plaster set and that will complete our hinge axis maxillary cast mounting procedures. Once this is set, we can remove this maxillary cast from the axis mounting system, transfer it to the articulator for the mandibular mounting procedures. Thank you.